horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fella! I'm Silver! Honest John Nolan, the sheriff of Grindstone, wasn't afraid of a fight. In fact, most of the veteran lawman's life had been spent fighting heavy odds. But now he faced something against which there seemed to be no defense. Honest John was scared. He paced the floor of his small home nervously as he glanced toward the closed door of his wife's bedroom. A moment later, Dr. Banner opened the door and closed it softly behind him. Doc, how's Mary? Take it easy, John. How badly is she hurt? That fall from her horse broke her back. No. Pressure on the spinal cord is causing paralysis. But, Doc, you you can fix it, can't you? John... If I were in your shoes, I, I'd want you to tell me the truth. That's what I want, Doc. Give it to me straight. Mary's condition is critical. What do you... You mean she'll, she'll die? There is a way to save her life. Well, then what are you waiting for? She's the most important thing in the world to me. Now, wait a minute, John. I'm just a common, ordinary country doctor without the necessary knowledge or skill to perform the operation. Operation? Yes. An expert surgeon with the advantages of a hospital could save Mary, but I, uh, I've done all I can. Well, would it be all right to move her to take her to one of those surgeons in hospitals? Yes, I think I could make a cast for her so she could be moved on a stretcher. How far does she have to be moved? St. Louis. Then I'll take her there. How much will it cost, Doc? At least a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? Well, I've never had that much money at one time in my life. Neither have I. If I had, I'd help you out. Yes, I know, Doc. But I'll find some way to get the money. If Mary's life depends on it, I'll get whatever it takes. Maybe you'll be able to borrow it. That's my only chance. Well, I have a few more calls to make. Oh, just one thing more, Doc. Yeah? How much time do I have? How soon will Mary need that operation? The sooner the better. Uh I've asked Mrs. Jenkins to come over to take care of Mary, John. She'll be here in a half an hour or so. Good, good. 
When she comes, I'll go call on some of the fellas in town and try to raise that cash. And let me know how you make out. I'll stop at the Gold Eagle for a meal on my way home. I'll see you there later. As Sheriff Nolan sat at his wife's bedside, waiting for Mrs. Jenkins to arrive, two hard-faced men drew rein at a fork in the trail a short distance from town. Oh, 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 oh. The close-set eyes, heavy beard, and wedge-shaped frame of Cash Britton were well known to peace officers in Oregon and Montana territory. Britton and Oni Mears were wanted for a number of crimes. Their most recent was a bank robbery, which netted them several thousand dollars in new currency. But they had killed a bank guard to get the money. To avoid capture, they had headed south with a number of lawmen on their trail. Cash Britton was more familiar with the area around Grindstone than his partner. Yes. Is there anything to this part of the country besides sand, cactus, and rattlesnakes? <laughs> a lot more, Oni. All I've seen looks more the same. What do you care? The border's ahead of us, and the law's still behind us. You hope it's behind us. We've so many tin stars on our trail, there's no telling... Well, I'll be... What's wrong? Even owl hoots are after us. Huh? This is the second time I've seen that masked man. He was on that ridge back there. Well, chances are he's dodging the law itself. I saw a redskin with him. They might be cutting our son. You're loco. Why borrow trouble? I don't have to borrow it. We got plenty. These horses are too winded to travel much further. Well, that's why we stopped here. There's a town ahead called Grindstone. Grindstone? Yeah. We'll hold up there for a couple of days. We can't go there, Cash. And why not? I've heard of that town. There's a lawman there named Nolan. Honest John Nolan. Why, he's double barrel poison. Honest John has never seen us. Even so, I don't want to risk... We're not risking a thing. I don't want to tangle with that bad toe. Relax, honey. We'll stay clear of the law. (laughs) Of course, if you'd rather camp out here with the cactus and rattlesnakes while I go get a couple of good meals... All right, all right, I'm with you. I don't like it. (laughs) You like it better when you get some hot food under your belt. Come on, get Get up up there, boy. Get up. As the fugitives urged their tired horses toward Grindstone, Sheriff John Nolan was in the bank. He explained his situation to the banker and was surprised when the older man said, I'm sorry, Sheriff. I sympathize with you, but... You mean you'll not lend me the money? Banks lend money when there is sufficient collateral. You have no security to offer. Oh, being honest and keeping this town clean for the last 20 years. Isn't security. Not security enough for a thousand dollar loan. I see. Thanks, Mr. Bibbs. Thanks a lot. The sheriff strode from the bank to a nearby cafe. Sam, if you let me have the money, I'll pay it back with interest. Seems like I remember asking you for something and being turned down. You mean that time your brother-in-law was in trouble? That's what I mean, Sheriff. Oh, but Sam, I was doing my job. The law says... There's no law that says I've got to lend a thousand dollars to a stiff-necked sheriff. All right, Sam. Forget it. Forget I ask you. From the cafe, Sheriff Nolan went to the general store. $1,000. Thousand dollars. It's a lot of money, Sheriff. Oh, I know it is, Pete. Especially to me right now. Yeah. It was just as much to me a couple of years ago. What? About two years ago this winter, a gent came to me and offered me double the price for a load of hay if I'd deliver it west of town. You found out about it, the deal fell through. Well, I remember that. Men and his partners were rustlers. They were moving stolen stock up from the border. That's right. And I arrested those rustlers. And I lost a lot of cash. Are you turning me down? I'm turning you down. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had reached the fork in the trail where Cash Britton and Oni Mears had halted. Tonto pointed to the trail and said, Look, tracks, Kimasabi. It looks as if Cash Britton and Oni Mears are on their way to Grindstone. Maybe them go there to buy supplies. Britton's too smart to make a mistake like that. What do you mean? There's an honest, hard-hitting sheriff in town. You mean Sheriff Nolan? Yes, Tonto. Outlaws have steered clear of Grindstone for years because of him. Uh, Cash Britton must know John Nolan's reputation. Uh, maybe Britton think no one looked for him there. Yes, you may be right, Tonto. He might figure the safest hideout for an outlaw would be in a town with a lot of law. Uh, we go to town and look for him? Yes. It'll be dark by the time we get there. Uh, plenty good. Then no one see mass. That's right. 
I'll wait at the edge of town while you search for Britain and Mears. Me savvy. Let's go, Toto. Monsieur! Let him count! Half an hour later, Dr. Banner entered the Gold Eagle Cafe. The waiter finished serving Cash Britain and Oni Mears. Then came to the doctor's table. Hello, Bert. Evening, Doc. I have a message for you. Another sick call? No, it's the sheriff. He was in here a few minutes ago. Did he leave? Yeah. Said there was no use waiting for you because he hadn't had any luck. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I know it's none of my business, Doc. But what's going on? Why are you and the sheriff wearing such long faces? Somebody sick? Yes, Bert. John's wife is mighty sick. Yeah, I heard she was thrown from a horse. That's right. But there's a far more serious illness in Grindstone. It's a vicious epidemic. Gosh, someone has smallpox or diphtheria? Worse than that. Well, what is it, Doc? Ingratitude, selfishness, cruelty, and man's inhumanity to man. Huh? I don't savvy. Sheriff Nolan's wife needs an operation to save her life. The operation will cost a thousand dollars, but the sheriff is broke. He's broke because for the last 20 years he's really earned the name Honest John. Yes, I, I know he's honest. He's but... refused to take graft. He's worked hard to make Grindstone a safe place to live. But in spite of that, there isn't a man in town who'll lend him enough to save his wife's life. Gosh, Doc, I have a little cash saved. It's less than a hundred dollars. But if it'll help the sheriff... Wouldn't be enough to help, but that's the trouble with the world. Unselfish people don't have much money. And maybe that's the reason they don't have it. Hey, Doc, don't you want a meal? No, Bert. Reckon I've lost my appetite. Good night. Well, I'll be on Hey, waiter. What'll it be, gents? Uh, who's the fellow who just left here? Doc Banner, why? Well, I, uh, I couldn't help but hear what he said. Sheriff Nolan's wife is sick, huh? Yeah. Like Doc said, Honest John's finding out he hasn't got a friend in town. Oh, that's too bad. A lawman plays his cards straight, and what does he get? Nothing but a raw deal, if you ask me. Uh, where's the sheriff now? Well, when he left here, he told me he's going to his office. Why? Oh, no special reason. I, I just wanted... Yeah, I... I reckon this will pay for our meals. <laughs> yes, sir. It sure will. Well, you keep the change. Come on, on. Hey, you going loco? Shut up till we're out of here. I thought we were going to hold up in this town. Humping the waiter about the sheriff's no way to steer clear of the law. I know what I'm doing. I suppose your next move will be to walk into the sheriff's office. That's right. But now listen, Simmer Cash. down, Oni. I got an idea that'll make both of us rich. Cash. Like What's wrong now? Up there. He's behind us. Uh, who are you talking about? That redskin coming out of the cafe there. The one who's been training on us for a week. I told you a masked man and an engine were dogging our son. Just because he came here for a meal doesn't mean he's following us. Who ever heard of a redskin having cash enough to buy a meal? I tell you, he's following I'm us. I'm not no more anxious to be trailed than you are. If I'm not worried about him, why should you be? But you didn't see those two. Now, I did. And, and I... you told me all about him. <laughs> I'm still not worried. Now, I, I'm going to talk to honest John Nolan. You're going to talk to him? Well, what about? About a plan I have in mind, that's what. If it works... We take plenty of cash across the border with us. <laughs> Where will you be? I'm going to trail that redskin. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. After leaving the Gold Eagle Cafe, Toto hurried to join the Lone Ranger. He moved along the dark street until he reached the livery stable at the edge of town. As he turned a corner of the building, the masked man said, Toto, that's you? That's right. Did you see Cash Britton and Oni Mears? Uh Uh-huh. We see him in cafe, then talk to waiter, then Cash Britton leave. Go see Sheriff. Britain's gone to see the Sheriff? I thought so. Look out, Tonto, behind you. You and that masked man have been trailing us. Him go for gun. He's too slow. Ow! I'm hit! Help! A masked man shot me! This way, Tonto, hey, hurry. You all right, hey, Kimasami? Yes, but those shots Help. will bring someone to investigate. We'll make it look as if we're getting away. Take both horses, Tonto. Huh? What you do? I'll keep out of sight behind the livery stable. You ride east, then circle back and meet me here. He's heavy. Get him up, Scout. Come, Silver! They're getting away! Help! Help! They're getting away! Shut up, Pony! Why'd you start gunplay? I'm hit, Cash. That masked man's bullet brushed my arm. You're not hurt bad if the bullet only brushed you. Listen, Cash, I was right. The masked man and the redskin were following us. They got... Here, some... here! What's the gunplay? Hey, well, who are you? Sheriff Nolan. Now, which one of you started the shooting? Neither one of us. Two outlaws started the sheriff. One was masked and the other was a redskin. They got away before I could stop them. Who are you? Oh, he's my partner, Sheriff. I, uh... I was on my way to see you when I heard the shooting. Why'd you want to see me? Well, I'd like to explain that in private. I have enough to worry about without taking on a private fight. Speak up That's now. That's or... what I wanted to see you about. What? I'd like to talk to you about your your worries. I, I think I might be able to help you. But I'd rather talk in your office. What happened, Sheriff? What's the gunplay? Oh, you might as well forget it, boys. Just a private fight. Nobody's hurt. Oh. My arm's hurt. Wrapping your bandana. I'll meet you later at the Gold Eagle. All right. Come on, stranger. We'll have that private talk. I'm with you, Sheriff. Now that we're near some lamplight, your face looks familiar. Who are you? Well, I've never been in this part of the country before, Sheriff. I've seen you somewhere. Well, maybe you've seen my picture. What's your name? Britain. Cash Britain. Britain, huh? Eh? I thought... Hey, now I know where I've seen your face. There's a hundred dollar reward notice for you. Yeah, I'm wanted for rustling a few stairs up north. And you've nerve enough to walk in here boasting about it? Why? Take you... it easy, Sheriff. Let's talk about you. I don't palaver with two bit cattle rustling coyotes. You want to save your wife's life, don't you? What's that? I heard all about it tonight, Sheriff. You need cash to buy an operation for her. There's not an honest man in Grindstone who'll lend you the money. That's none of your business. Well, I'm willing to make it my business. What do you mean? Yeah. Take a look at this, Sheriff. Why, uh... I have a thousand dollars in government bank notes here. Now, count them if you want to. What's the idea, Britton? My partner and I are tired of rustling, Sheriff. We, we'd like to make some real money. Just what do you mean? I mean the bank. You talking bank robbery? Yes. Well, that is, if we could rob it with your permission. Why, you... And I figure a thousand dollars should pay for that permission. You dirty coyote trying to bribe the law. Call it a bribe if you want to. Or call it repayment to your friends. The same friends who turned you down when you wanted a loan. (laughs) Uh, How about it, Sheriff? Do you want to go on being honest, John? Or do you want to help your wife? I... I don't know what to say. Think it over. I'll go to the Gold Eagle to meet my partner. But I'll be back here in a half hour for your answer. <laughs> See you later, Sheriff. I shouldn't have listened to that crooked sidewinder. I should have arrested him and gone after his partner. But a thousand dollars. My reputation against Mary's life. <laughs> Exactly half an hour, Cash Britton returned to the office. Uh, how about it, Sheriff? Is it a deal? Go ahead, Britton. Oh, I knew you'd be sensible, Sheriff. Yeah, yeah. Sensible? I'm selling my self-respect and everything I ever lived for. I'll clear out of here and I hope I never see you again. <laughs> sure we'll clear out. Only and I have a lot of work to do. 
The sheriff's decision had not been as final as he thought. After Cash Britton left the office, John Nolan began to pace the floor nervously. He had fought dozens of battles in his life, battles of powder smoke and lead, but none could equal the fight of an honest man with his conscience. As he paced with his head down, staring at the floor, he didn't know that a masked man stood in the shadows outside his office window, listening intently and watching the silent struggle. No. No, I can't do it. Suddenly, Sheriff Nolan realized what he had to do. He took the money Britton had given him from the desk drawer. He placed it in a large envelope, then put it into his pocket. He strapped on his guns and a moment later slammed the office door behind him. Doc Banner was returning to town after an emergency call at a nearby ranch. He saw Sheriff Nolan striding toward the bank. Doc called a greeting. John! Hey, John! But the grim-faced lawman didn't slacken his pace or turn his head. The only time I've seen that look on his face, he was heading for a six-gun showdown with a couple of murdering coyotes. Who? Who the... Puzzled by his friend's behavior, Doc halted his buckboard in front of the deserted blacksmith shop. He forgot his own weariness as he jumped to the ground and hurried after the sheriff. After forcing the lock on the rear door of the bank, Cash and his partner went inside to the vault. By the light of a shaded lantern, Oni Mears worked on the vault door. Come on, hurry, Oni. I'm doing the best I can. Having a bad arm makes it hard to work. Oh, you're taking long enough. Take it easy. I... There it is. Oh, good. Now to get the money. Get your hands up instead. Wait, hey, what the... the sheriff? That's right. You're both covered, so don't try a fast move. Cash, you said you paid this ten... Star to leave us alone. I did pay him. Sheriff, if this is a double cross... I wouldn't I'll... interfere as long as I kept your money. So here's your cash. You can't get out of the deal that easy. I'll squeal on you. I'll tell everyone in town we have an agreement. I'll tell how you double-crossed us. You couldn't prove it, but you'll not have to. Because as soon as you two are behind bars, I'm turning in my badge. And I'll tell the whole story. You're local, Sheriff. Yeah. John, John what's the trouble? Sheriff Nolan turned as Doc came into the room. Behind the doctor, he saw a masked man and an Indian. Doc, what's the idea of... The sheriff never finished his question. As soon as he turned his head, Cash Britton drew his gun. Standing behind Doc, the Lone Ranger saw the gesture. He pushed Doc to one side and fired. <laughs> Smashing Britain's gun, but the outlaw's bullet had already hit its mark. The sheriff fell to the floor. John! John! Do you want to try for a gun? No, mister. I've already got one bad arm. Don't shoot me again. Then don't try a fast move. Toto, help Doc. See how seriously the sheriff is hurt. Oh, me help. Mister, what's your stake in this game? You're on the dodge the same as we are. Maybe we can make a deal. You're both wrong. We can't make a deal. And I'm not running from the law. But that man... This doesn't mean what you think. Hey, what's the shoot? It's a masked man and a redskin. Outlaws. That masked man's no outlaw. His guns are covering the two gents who are trying to rob the bank. Now stand back, all of you. Hey, look at the sheriff. He's been shot. Doc, is he... Is he hurt bad? Yes, honest John's been hurt. Doc, is he dead? What do you care whether he is or not? You don't think enough of a good sheriff to give him a hand when he needs help. He's risked his life again to save your property. Would any of you face a bullet to protect your neighbor's cash? I guess you're right, that, Doc. Oh, Howard. You'll be all right, Doc. mister. Fortunately, it's a shoulder wound. Him coming to now. Doc. Doc. Take it easy, John. Those pole cats, did they get away? No. Uh, There's a masked man here holding a gun on both of them. A masked man? Well, where's my deputy? Where's Clem? Right here, Sheriff. And I brought handcuffs with me. Put them on those two coyotes over there. Yeah, right, Doc. All right, lower your hands while I put these handcuffs on you. Now, listen. My partner and I were double-crossed. Sheriff Nolan was in on this. I paid him off to let us rob the bank. Uh, what's that? I made a deal with Nolan. I paid him a thousand dollars. Is your money in this envelope, Britton? Yeah, that's it. Examine it, Toto. Ah, let me take a look. I still don't know where you fit in on this deal, mister. But that's the cash I paid Nolan. He agreed to look the other way while we cleaned out the bank. But he double-crossed us. This new paper money came or something. What about the serial numbers? Them same as numbers we have on this. That's all I wanted to know. I'm glad you admitted the money is yours, Cash. What do you mean? It was stolen from a bank in Montana two weeks ago. The serial numbers are on record. Your admission convicts you of that robbery and the murder of the bank guard you shot when you made your getaway. 
Well, Sheriff Nolan, that's what you wanted, isn't it? What? Yes, it was a good idea to set a trap to capture these two. A trap that forced them to admit the money was there. Oh, right. Wait a minute. So you forced their hand, huh, Sheriff? That was smart figuring, Sheriff. Boys, boys, we've been so used to having a first-rate lawman, we haven't appreciated it. Oh, wait, wait, you don't understand. I'm turning in my badge because oh, I... Hold on, Sheriff. You can't turn in your badge. We need you. Doggone right we do. Without you in the sheriff's office, this town's likely to be overrun by crooks. You don't understand. I've got to resign. Oh, no, no, Sheriff. We'll raise your salary. That's right, Sheriff. I know you tried to borrow cash today, and I'm sorry I turned you down. So am I, Sheriff. The bank will be glad to lend whatever you need. And believe me, honest John's word will be all the security we'll require for the loan. Sheriff, you'll not have to borrow money. What's that? There's a three thousand dollar reward for the capture of Cash Britton and Oni Mears. Money to be paid when you turn them over to a United States Marshal. Three thousand dollars? I I thought there was a hundred dollar reward for Britton. Cattle rustlers aren't worth as much as bank robbers and murderers. Are you all set, Deputy? They're both handcuffed and ready for the trip to jail, mister. Then come on, Toto. Now hold on. What about that mask? Doc will explain it to you. Adios. Goodbye, mister. Hey, Doc, what about that man? He's all right, Clem. He's no crook. All right, come on, you two. Let's go. Doc, the masked man and I were listening when you told those crooks off, John. You did a great job. You don't know the whole story. I did take a bribe. You didn't keep it. No, but I... Now you'll get the cash for Mary's operation. And this town has finally come to its senses. It appreciates what you've done for it. Now... Come over to my office and I'll bandage your wound. Oh, there's a lot I don't savvy. Like what, for example? Like you siding with a mask man. <laughs> John, anyone would be proud to side that masked man. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.